<laughs> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I got a whole vlog planned out for you guys. It's going to be a very full vlog this week. I believe I have all of the segments this week. I'm going to do that thing where I put the timestamps down here, but I believe we're doing everything. We're doing it all. What I've been vaping and news and advocacy and beer and, and vape mail, retro vaping, uh, viewer mail, comments of the week, juice. Did I forget anything? Getting to know Grim Green. Yeah, it's all going to be. It's all going to be included this week. And I'm really excited. I actually went through over the break. There was, there was some holidays that just happened, actually. I'm not sure if you were aware, <laughs> but there was some holidays that happened. Uh, Christmas and New Year's just happened. Hope everybody had a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, we had a great time. Uh, it was just really just me and Pickle hanging out. We didn't go anywhere this holiday season, which actually felt really good. We got to stay in Southern California and, and be in our apartment. We had friends over and it was just, it, we had a really, really great time. And during that little holiday break in between, you know, shooting and editing videos and doing normal work stuff, I went through and I, I went through some of my old vape stuff. I found my old tackle box and I pulled out a whole bunch of really old retro vapey stuff that I am really excited to put together and vape in the retro vaping segment. I've got a bunch of cool things so we're going to have a bunch of cool retro vaping segments over the next couple weeks here in the vlog and that's just really cool. I'm really excited about that but anyway welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me here in the vlog. Um, before we get too far into this vlog I do want to do that thing for where I hear from one of my subscribers but what I want to do right now is do just a really little minimal quick update to that RevTech, uh, you know, the Rev GTS 230 watt box mod. I had done a review for this about two weeks ago and don't get me wrong, I still stand by everything I said in that review. This is a fantastic mod, but there is an option in the menu system under the, uh, here, let me find it real fast. Yeah, the display mode. If you go to the display mode, you can choose 20 seconds, 10 seconds, it's the power save mode. You can choose 20 seconds, you can choose 10 seconds, or you can choose always on. And one night, you know, I just got a wild hair at my ass and I was like, I really like this display. I want to see it all the time. And so I set it to always on and overnight, the mod itself completely drained my batteries. Not completely, completely dead, but the next morning when I grabbed my vape to vape it, I looked at my screen and I was like, what the hell's going on? Both my battery indicator levels were, I mean, minimal. They were, they were basically gone and the little color indicators were red. It's like, your batteries are dead. Change these batteries. And I thought, I just, I felt like I just put fresh batteries in there. I was like, hmm, maybe not. Maybe, you know, maybe I did put old batteries in there. So I threw some new batteries in there. I was starting to vape it, like using it throughout the day. And I let it sit again for most of the afternoon and then again overnight. And then the next morning when I grabbed it, my batteries were dead. And I realized it's because I turned turned that stupid always on feature on. So if you care at all about battery life, which I have, a, I get the vibe that a lot of us actually do care about battery life, but if you care about battery life, don't turn that option on like ever. It's just gonna drain your batteries. When your mod's not sitting there, your screen is always gonna be on. Even when you turn the brightness all the way down, it still managed to drain my batteries. And keep in mind, this is the course, this is over the course of like 12 or 13 hours. This isn't like two hours later, my batteries were dead. This was like over the course of an afternoon. So maybe like four in the afternoon, nothing that night, and then all night sleeping. And then the next morning is when my batteries were actually like in a dying stage. So it does it, you know, over the course of time. But damn, I was really bummed out. I thought, well, well, okay. So there you go. Just never turn that feature on. Don't turn on the always on. Cause yeah, it's, it's going to drain your batteries. Otherwise still very rocking, uh, really enjoy this mod. You want to check out my review I uploaded a few weeks ago. I'll link to it down in the description if you wanted to check it out, but it's still a banging mod. Anyway, right now, now that that announcement is out of the way, I do want to do that thing where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, let's hear from Darren. Hey, Grim. Darren Osborne from Clear Lake, Iowa here. Just wanted to wish you happy holidays and hope you're having a, hope you have a good new year or going to have a good new year. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to my wife, Melanie, and my kids, uh, Mason, Aiden and Elizabeth and helping me transition from smoking to vaping uh, been a big support uh, also wanted to kind of do something a little bit different maybe talking about how Bogan always just drinks in on his videos and you're the only other one that does it too I thought I'd just share with you a beer that I'm currently having and that is uh, banana bread beer 
thought you might be into it because I know how much you like bananas. I got that sitting here in my hole in the wall glass from Akron, Iowa. It's quite tasty. Thought you might try it. And I know how we feel about rip trippers right about now. Uh, kind of on the fence, but this merge line unification, uh, very tasty. Also banana flavored, and it goes quite well with this beer. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Also, if I could, give a shout out to um, River City Vapes in Mason City, Iowa. And all the people down there that hook me up with juice all the time whenever I get in the need. But anyway, rambling now. So have a good one and uh, keep on vaping. Hmm, that's a good pairing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, bro. Thank you so much. That's uh, that's awesome. Um, definitely give a shout out to Melanie. There's a lot of names to remember here, Darren. There's a lot of names to remember here. Melanie, Mason, Aiden, and Elizabeth. Yeah, boom, you're all shouted out. That's a lot of names to remember, but it's okay. I wrote them down. I, I, I cheated, you see. As well as everybody at River City Vapes, uh, thank you so much. I haven't got to try that Merge e-liquid from Rip Trippers, and I know we were saying, like, I don't know how we feel about Rip Trippers these days. Yeah, I, I, I love Rip Trippers these days. I want to actually congratulate Rip Trippers. He hit one million subscribers, you guys. And that, for a vape account on YouTube, is fucking awesome. Congratulations, Rip Trippers, and thank you, Darren, so much for sending in a video. If anybody else has a video, like a shout out type of thing they want to do, I love showing them on the vlog here. You can send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it, you know, whatever, just shout out. Chances are I'll see the video attachment anyway, but anything you want to say, want to shout out your shops or your family or anything like that, absolutely. And Darren, yes, that banana bread beer is delicious. That is a very delicious beer that I've actually not had in a while. It's been a hot minute since I've had that banana bread beer. I'm gonna have to check that out again. And I apologize if you can hear any noise happening outside of my window. I have to leave my window open because I vape so much that the vape needs somewhere to go. So I have to leave my window open so you might hear some slight, maybe construction sounds happening outside. Just just try to ignore it, it's totally cool. Just try to ignore it. But anyway, yeah, uh, I want to move on real quick before we get to any news and advocacy. I just wanna go over what I've been vaping and this is, some, this is the stuff that I've been vaping over this sort of Christmas and New Year's break. I haven't really set anything new up and I haven't really taken anything down. That's not true. I actually have a few new setups in here and it doesn't, why do I even bother trying to explain it? Why don't I just talk about what I've been vaping, Nick? We're ridiculous, ridiculous human being. Uh, first thing I've been using this weekend that really just surprised the hell out of me was that Coil Art D-Pro kit. The mod itself is dual parallel. It's unregulated, but it is regulated. They say it's like a smart unregulated. So there's something going on in here. I need to read much more about it, but there is a board in here, but it acts like a dual parallel unregulated box mod and you can build really wicked low on here. This is some Fiends coils. These are at a 0.08, which is quite the low build. I wouldn't be using this build on anything but something like this or something like a dual parallel unregulated box mod. I have a DHD tip on top of the, uh, you know, the coil art, the D-Pro atomizer, which in and of itself is not like a fantastic stellar atomizer, but for this, for this purpose, for this application, it's working just fine. Like I said, I got some Fiends coils in here. It's a 0.08 and there's nothing to adjust, but the damn thing hits nice and hard. I've I've got it loaded up with Lowrider. I found a couple bottles of Lowrider while I was doing some cleaning and I thought, man, I have not vaped that juice in a while, so I need to vape me some Lowrider. But this, this has been a banging little vape. And a few of these what I've been vaping were things from my best of 2017 video, or not best of 2017, I hate that term best. It's my favorite stuff from 2017. If you haven't got a chance to check it out, I highly recommend going to check it out. It's all of just my favorite stuff, all of all my favorite vape stuff from 2017. But I'm hanging in there with the Squid Industries double barrel, and it's interesting in the comments, this was kind of like uh, a little bit, uh, people were a little bit split on this. A lot of people really, really loved the double barrels, and some other people were saying, 
saying that it was kind of like uh, they didn't they didn't like it. They bought it and it's like their least favorite mod. They don't like the button. They don't like the clicky wheel adjustment. And I think, wow, you know, I mean, that's that's cool. Everybody obviously has different opinions. The Squid Industries Double Barrel, in my opinion, is one of the one of my favorite mods that I've ever used. I love the shape. I love the size. I'm not going to revisit my favorite video right, you know, my favorites of 2017 video right now, but I like it. I really like this mod. I've got it set to 60 watts. This is the Fire Luke mesh, which I can finally feel this coil head starting to show its age. Whenever on a sub ohm tank, whenever you have to start turning down the wattage, that means the coil head is starting to show its age. This dropped from 65 watts down to 60 watts and now I'm going to turn it back down to about 54, 55 watts because it's starting to show its age. It's getting a very slight off flavor and it's getting a little bit dry every once in a while. And that's when you know that your cotton on the inside is spent when it's done wicking. But I like this Fire Luke mesh tank a lot. It's sitting on top of, like I already said, at least 800 times. Squid Industries double barrel. This is loaded up with that apricot, apricot, apricot cream. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Apricot cream from Zach Fiends, Drip Fiends, DHD tip on top. I just love the DHD tips because I get matchy matchy with everything. I have one, two, three, four, five DHD tips going right now. But this is a banging vape too. It's honestly still pretty nice and flavorful. It's not wicking as well as it was when it was a brand new coil head, but the flavor, the flavor is still there. Also still really, really loving this Faro Mini. This is just a banging RT. I hope to have a review for this very, very soon. And I don't know who else has reviews for this. I honestly don't know how old this tank even is. This is something that I just set up and I, I'm wishing I had set it up a lot sooner. I did open some vape mail over the holiday weekend to because that shit was just piling up and one of the things in one of my vape mails was uh, this new mod from Asmodus it's a dual 18650 stabilized wood uh, touch screen guy from Ultroner Asmodus Ultroner Ultroner did that uh, you know they did that Luna squonk mod that I love so much which is also in my what I've been vaping but they also did this EOS dual 18650 it's got like uh, stabilized wood and acrylic doors I think I opened this actually I think I opened and set this up on one of the Patreon live streams we had last week and it's been going ever since. I threw the Faro Mini on there. This is loaded up with Rogue from Vigil Anti Vapors, just a delicious juice. It's a 0.5 ohm coil at 50 watts, which is my favorite combination. A 0.5 at 50 watts, I think, is like my perfect perfect combination of like warmth and flavor. It's just one of my favorite vapes and I'm so glad to have this vape right now. It's, it's delicious. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Dig it so much. Another thing I opened over the holiday break was this little fucking amazing little banger right here. This is the Wake Mod Co. Littlefoot 60 watt kit. It comes with a wake tank and this little mod right here that's got cool art down the front. The button is engraved as well. It's shiny. This thing is a fingerprint magnet, but it just looks so shiny and cool and it's such a nice size for my hand. I have this loaded up with the acid. This is the very last of my Pony on Acid. I have vaped so much Pony on Acid. This is the very last of it and I'm going to need a lot more of this juice. But this is basically the same thing. This is a a 0.48 ohm coil at 51 watts and dude it's banging The sub ohm coils in that wake tank, man, they are just little flavor monsters. In fact, I am dying, 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 dying. I think when I finally get to the end of this pony on acid, I'm going to put one of those mouth to lung coil heads in here and just have a small, cool little mouth to lung wake mod co little foot guy. And of course, it's time to do. Okay, is all that out of my system? Jesus Christ. And now it's time to do a battery update. I've been vaping the same Wake Modco tank with the mouth to lung coil head in it nonstop on these batteries. And I've been measuring the battery life by how many times I fill up the tank. What this represents right here is the very bottom of my 11th fill of the tank. 11th? Oh shit, I might've lost track. It's either the 11th or the 12th. In fact, this might actually be the bottom of the 12th time I've filled this tank. And the batteries, while they're getting low, 
I still have plenty of battery life on here. I think this is going to go through another two or three tankfuls. Keep in mind, mouth to lung tankfuls, which it takes a lot of time to vape through an entire mouth to lung fucking tank. But yeah, that's about where we're at right now. Got a little bit of battery life left. These are the same dual 18650s that I've been using for the last, ugh, shit, month, maybe month and a half on here. It's just mouth to lung and it's just battery life for days and it's just a big loud truck outside. Okay, come on truck, let's drive. Go, go, go do what you're gonna do. Uh, I, I just had to close my window because apparently it's not a truck. Oh, is it a truck? Is the truck driving away? I don't know, it sounds like it's parked right underneath my fucking window though. Yeah, anyway, who cares? We just move on with our lives. Um, of course, I've been vaping this heavily Ultroner, Asmodus, uh, Luna, Squonker, filled up with Yig, original recipe recoil with a squonk pin on the inside, DHD metalhead cap on top, um, amazing. This is just, this is a vape that I am probably never going to get rid of, just ever. It's just such a mellow, easy, just flavorful vape, and I still get plenty of clouds. Look, I'm, I, I get plenty of clouds. This mod is honestly especially good when I have people over in my house because not everybody wants to hang out, you know, like in a vapor-filled room, just cloud comp all the time. And so I can vape this and have a little bit more uh, baby of a cloud, a little bit smaller cloud, still a very satisfying cloudy vape. It's just a little bit less. It's a little bit more mellow. It's a little bit more flavorful. And that's, oh, that's what I enjoy about this vape. And I also want to take a second to say that these dumb geek vape flask things are actually awesome. So I got this and I was using it wrong in my squonker, but now that I know how to use it to fill up my squonker, it works really well. And I really like this geek vape one because it has two spouts. I can just unscrew this top part here and I have like a needle tip, like better than a chubby gorilla dripper bottle that I've been using to drip and I've been using it to fill up that wake modco tank because there is just a little bit of pony on acid here. I think I have maybe one or two more tankfuls, maybe just one. I think two's being a little bit unrealistic, but I got one more tankful of pony on acid in here, and I've been loving this geek vape thing. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna rinse it out and use it again and use it again and use it again. My only my only regret is that I only have one of them. I need to get some more of these bottles. I really like these geek vape flasks, especially when you're using like big big 120 mil bottles, having something like this that's a little bit more portable to carry around with you for dripping or tank filling is very, very nice. And it's not just like carrying around a plastic bottle. It feels a little bit, you know, more substantial than that. It's not necessarily like heavier. I don't know. I just really like it. I'm still getting to know it. I'm using it a lot. I'm trying to work it into my routine. Maybe when I leave the house, I take it with me. Maybe when I go upstairs, if I bring a tank, I'll take it with me so I can fill up my tank without having to run downstairs. And then I don't have to use those 100 mil chubby gorilla bottles, which look, those are fine bottles, but my chubby gorilla bottles, everyone loves them, but mine always leak, especially the 100 mils. I don't leave the house with a 100 mil bottle. Like I'm not going to go dripping with a 100 mil bottle because in addition to bringing my 100 mil bottle, I know I'm also going to need to bring some friggin' paper towels or a napkin or something because they leak juice everywhere always. And I don't know why Chubby Gorilla won't fix that. So in the meantime, using that gig vape flask, only a few more things this week. I promise. Evic Primo mini topped with that Inakin, you know, P. Bissardo, uh, Dimitri mouth to lung tank, the heiress. This is loaded up with 12 milligram Helen from the Lane Cove line. This has just been a fantastic vape as well. Mm hmm. Good. Still having a little bit of a love affair with that suck my mod with Hofo Nudge RDA. The more that I use it, the more I completely love it. It is a flavor banger for days. I get unbelievable flavor from this. It's loaded up with that anarchist pink lemonade sitting on top of my very sentimental rev revenant, my Sweden revenant mod that I traded. Again, I got another uh, DHD nub tip on top of the nudge. This came out to this is a 0.13 at 80 watts, and it's just a uh, flavorful, flavorful, very cloudy vape.
so good. So good, so good. I, I I am loving this combo. I am loving this Revenant Nudge combo with the Anarchist Pink Lemonade. This is this is a great vape, man. And lastly, I decided to set up more of a fancy combo, you know, more of like maybe a little bit fancier of a combo. I've been using, I don't know, some China stuff and a lot of the China stuff that's coming out. I'm kind of like, man, I'm not really super into that, man. Like it's it's cool and I'm sure it'll vape and I'm sure it's cool, but stylistically and just I, I'm just not really super into it. So I decided to set up my Stabwood Hexome again, gold original recipe, recoil on top, DHD cap. It's just the most beautiful beautiful gold and matchy matchy stab wood thing of all times. I think I have some fiends coils in here. I've got it loaded up with that poet sweet black tea and I am just remembering how much I love the hexomes and not just the hexomes but I really love this stab wood hexome. So the stab wood hexome is something I've never done a review for because they're really really difficult to get and they are really very very expensive. It's basically a hexome and then it's got this fat back door like the back back of the door has this big rounded part and when you hold it in your palm for my size normal sized adult male nick hands this is perfect this feels so wonderful in the hand and having that original recipe recoil flavor banger on top is is awesome this poet sweet black tea just tastes delicious man <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. And this is the Flavor Bro flavor cap on here. And I forgot how I haven't used the Flavor Bro flavor cap on the original recipe recoil in quite a long time. I forgot how delicious it tastes and I forgot how smooth that airflow is. Oh man. Just a, a really delicious vape that I've really been enjoying. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got for what I've been vaping other than my Mi Pod. Um, that's it. That's what I've been vaping. That's literally everything I have set up right now. So yeah, that's what I got for that. And what we're going to do right now is we are going to sit back down at the desk or sit down at the desk for the first time. We're going to sit down at the desk and we're going to do some friggin' news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. All right, well, here we are at the desk and yeah, everything looks boring now. My Christmas tree's taken down. All my lights are off of my guitar. There's nothing really to look back back here there's nothing really to see back here except for my closet so i don't know try to pretty this area up a little bit because i just love this camera angle go oh, so much anyway one thing uh, i did want to mention before we get into any news or advocacy is this is in my what i've been vaping uh, i forgot to grab it in my wedding by what i've been vaping but this is that uh, as vape defender pod system that looks like a belt buckle apparently this is also from what i'm told this is a clone of a very expensive expensive key fob for like a multi-million dollar sports car so as vape is kind of getting called out like oh you designed that to look like this key fob for this multi-million dollar car that you know no none of us will ever own I, I, I don't know anything about that car like I say sometimes I'm not a car guy I don't know anything about that car I'd never seen that key fob before I had seen this so yeah I mean if they ripped off the design then they ripped off the design I'm not sure that that doesn't really bother me at all and I know we're getting into the like oh well the juice comes in a soda can or well this mod looks like this or well this juice looks like this well this mod looks like a key fob from a car that doesn't really bother me a key fob from a car sure that whatever ip theft or design theft is between china and the car manufacturer but this isn't a something that's necessarily i, I think going to appeal to kids on any level it's not like ripping off Pokemon or Nintendo Switch or comic books or anything like that. To me, I guess that's where I draw the line. That's between, like I said, this is between China and the car manufacturer. Basically a cardo tank, sub ohm tank on the inside. Your sub ohm tank or your sub ohm tank coil head, coil head pulls right out of the tank. You replace it, you juice it, you fill it, and it's honestly a pretty great vape. This is loaded up with Smacks something i don't remember lick it this is loaded up with smacks lick it which is a peach cream flavor it is uh it's just delicious i actually never gave smacks other liquids a lot of vape time because i instantly and deeply fell in love with pony on acid so whenever i'm thinking about smacks i'm like no nope, smacks is pony on acid smacks is pony on acid that's their good juice you know but i'm finally actually getting around to trying some other smacks flavor 
flavors, and this Licket is just damn delicious. The first time I tasted it, I thought, Dad, why haven't I been vaping that one too? It's really bizarre. There's no drip tip or anything. You kind of put this whole weird metal piece in your mouth, which I'm not super stoked on, but I, I, it's such a good vape that I kind of just deal with it. It's crazy. It is flavorful and quiet. This is the quietest vape I've ever vaped in a lung style, you know, straight into the lung, clouds bro clouds type of vape. It's just basically silent. It's silent and flavorful. It's silent and flavorful and warm and weird looking. So, so there you go. This is also a thing what I've been vaping. So bizarre. So bizarre. That vape is so bizarre. Anyway, we do have some uh, some news and stuff to talk about this week. A fellow named Mark had posted this in the Namber Juice group. I had posted on Twitter, and I just think it's too good. I think it's too good to not also talk about here in the vlog, but we're talking about Missouri. Now, Missouri is the first state in the republic to successfully separate vapor products from tobacco products. Tobacco products in the state of Missouri now have their own designation and vapor products in the state of Missouri now have their own designation. This article comes from the Missouri Smoke Free Association and I don't honestly know now that I'm saying it if that's even the right way you say it. Is it Missouri? I've heard people say Missouri, 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 Missouri. I'm just going to say Missouri. That's the way I've always said it. Missouri or Missouri. I don't know. Sometimes people say things like Oregon or Nevada. So I know we're all not really great at pronouncing state names because people call Nevada, Nevada all the time. So I apologize to anybody living in Missouri. If I'm saying it incorrectly, please correct me because when people say Nevada, I correct them instantly. I go, actually, it's Nevada. Just a, a you know, a kind, helpful little, actually, it's a Nevada. No big deal. Just say Nevada from now on, or I'll correct you every time. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Missouri, the Missouri Smoke Free Association separated tobacco and vapor products, you know, legally on, on, on like a legal level. I'm just going to read a little bit from this article right here, but it says Missouri state law is clear. Vapor products, tobacco, and nicotine alternatives are categorically different and must be regulated separately. As each of these subjects produce entirely different health effects to both the consumer and those around them, this concept is common sense regulation. For statutory reasons, vapor products must not be included in any political subdivisions code of ordinances pertaining to smoke-free air laws, which means if you see a smoke-free air law, let's say at a beach or a public park, that is literally only for things that produce smoke. Those laws are not applicable now in the state of Missouri for vapor products. Instead, the state law leaves the matter to business owners and localities to decide if they allow or disallow vapor products to be employed. This is the way that it should be. I always bring up this subject, but one time when we were in Ohio, we went to this great bar and restaurant called Vortex, and we went in there and big on the menu, it says, hey, we're Vortex, we do this, that, and the other, we've got beer and burgers, we also allow free smoking and vaping, so if those things bother you, then maybe this isn't the establishment for you. And they put it on there, big bold letters, yes, we allow allow vaping and smoking. And it was awesome. It was such a relief to be able to go into a place and just eat and hang out and drink and maybe have a couple vapes. Me and Kent and Dwayne were there and it's not like we were cloud comping all over the place, although they allowed us to do that. But you know, we did have some vape etiquette. We were vaping, you know, mildly, calmly, maybe vaping and blowing it down and not directly, you know, at the person next to you. This is how it should be in all in states and, and local cities and towns. It should be up to the establishments, the businesses to decide whether or not they want to allow smoking or vaping in their establishment. They categorize it, uh, they say tobacco products, any substance containing tobacco leaf, including but not limited to cigarette, cigars, pipe tobacco, snuff, chewing tobacco, or dipping tobacco, but does not include alternative nicotine products or vapor products. That is kind of amazing. That's kind of unbelievable. This is the first time in like a, 
a mandated state law that I've seen separation of tobacco and vapor products where the tobacco product description is very, here's what tobacco is. It does not include vapor products. And then they categorize a vapor product. They say any non-combustible products containing nicotine that employs a heating element, power source, electronic circuit, or other electronic, chemical, or mechanical means regardless of shape or size that can be used to produce vapor from nicotine in a solution or other form. Vapor products includes any electronic cigarette, electronic cigar, electronic cigarillo, electronic pipe, or similar product or device and any vapor cartridge or other container of nicotine in a solution or other form that is intended to be used with or in an electronic cigarette, electronic cigar, electronic cigarillo, electronic pipe, or similar product or device. That is a very all-encompassingly description of vapor products. And they have it in big bold letters on the end of this. Vapor products do not include any alternative nicotine product or tobacco product. So they're saying right there in big bold letters that vapor products do not include any other smoking cessation products. So things like the patch or the gum or Chantix, those are not included as well as other tobacco products. Those are not included. Vapor products finally have their own thing, their own category, their own designation. And this is, this is huge. Moving forward in Missouri, if they raise the tax on tobacco products, that tax does not apply to vapor products unless it's specifically called out for also raising the tax on vapor products. And this is a huge deal because in California, vapor products are tobacco products. They are categorized as the same exact thing in California, which is one of those things that just drives me completely insane. Missouri gets it. They've separated it and they get it. In California, it's one in the same product. So if there is ever a vote on a new bill that's going to raise tobacco tax by $2, then that retroactively, if that gets passed, that instantly applies to all vapor products as well. And that is a huge bummer and that's why I'm so excited to see this happening in Missouri. And then the last little bit that they include in this new, you know, uh, language here in Missouri, they say alternative nicotine products and vapor products shall only be sold to persons 18 years age and older, shall be subject to local and state sales tax, but shall not be otherwise taxed or regulated as tobacco products. It's there. It's black and white. It's ink on paper. It says that they will not be taxed as tobacco products. Huge. This is huge. This is giant. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to post a link down in the description of this video to this article from Smoke Free Missouri. Feel free to use it, share it around, share it all over social media because this is actually a really big deal. You can also like their page on Instagram, Missouri Smoke Free, as well as follow them on Twitter. I'll put a link to their Twitter account in the description as well. But awesome. Congratulations, Missouri. Congratulations, Missouri Smoke Free Association for doing this, for getting this done. This needs to happen in a lot of other states. In fact, I mean, ideally, I would like to see this happen in every state. How, what kind of wonderful world would we be living in if every state in the Republic separated vapor products and had a clear, concise description as to legally what vapor products are, and then had a clear and concise description for legally what tobacco products are? How, how fantastic would that be? How fantastic would that feel? I think that would be amazing. I'm into it. I'm into what Missouri is doing. And I, and I wholeheartedly support it. So yeah, thank you so much, Mark, for sending that news my way. I have one more thing I wanted to talk about as well. I have an update for the Ontario bill, Ontario Canada bill, uh, bill 147. Uh, a fellow who just goes by the name of Home Computer, although I think his name is Mike, I'm not 100% sure, but he sent me an email and said, hey Nick, here's just a quick update on Ontario bill 174 that was voted on on December 12th. Unfortunately, the bill passed. 69 to 27. Although this is a blow to the vaping community, the CVA, the Canadian Vaping Association, has asked us not to panic. This is just a bill and not a law yet. They are working with the Ontario government and has assured us that amendments will be made and vape shops will be exempt from most of it. We have our work cut out for us, so thank you for helping us Canadians fight the good fight. By the way, it's pronounced 
provincial, not provincial. Yeah, when I was talking about uh, the Bill 147 up there in Ontario, I kept saying provincial instead of provincial. Is it provincial? Provincial. Provincial. Not provincial, as, as I was saying. I mispronounce... Yeah, I don't know, 80 to 90% of the things I say. So thank you for the correction, provincial. Feel free to use any of this in your vlog. Thanks, dude, Mikey P. So yeah, thank you, Mikey, for the email update. Unfortunately, that's that's kind of a bummer that Ontario Bill 174, 147 passed. Bill 147 in Ontario is incredibly restrictive of, of vaping and e-cigarettes. For the most part, it's a, it's a cannabis bill in Canada, but they also tacked on a smoke-free bill as well that does doesn't let you smoke or use vapor products uh, kind of anywhere, including inside vape shops, including inside anywhere, including inside your own car. There was a lot to this bill and it did get passed, but what I'm going to link to down in the description is the Canadian, what was it called? Yes, the Canadian Vaping Association, which their website is not very updated. There is not a lot of information about Bill 147 on this website. The only thing they have for Ontario right now, Dave dates back to 2014 and then they updated it in 2016. So it's been a while. Hopefully they get some more updated information on their site. I don't know a lot of Canadian vapors that aren't already well aware of this, what's going on in Ontario, but I will be posting some links down in the description so you can check them out if you are interested. If you're a Canadian vapor, there's some good information to spread out there about how we can still possibly reverse this Bill 147 in Ontario or at least get it amended, maybe a little bit like they did in Missouri, where they, you know, separated tobacco and vapor products. That just makes so much sense to me. It's ridiculous to regulate these two things similarly, and that's what a lot of people, including Canada, including California, including the United States, that's what they're doing. But Missouri, man, they got it right. They got it right. Anyway, thank you so much for sending that over, Mike. Uh, I'll post a link down in the description, like I said, to the Canadian Vaping Association where you can read much more about what's going on in Ontario. I had a few more updates to do about uh, Thailand. I had some more information about Indonesia as well. Thailand, I've got a lot of people who are vapors in Thailand who... Uh, oh, pardon me. I've got a lot of people in Thailand who are vapors who have been tweeting at me and emailing me. And yes, I'm going to be sharing all of that information uh, soon, hopefully next week. I'm actually still going through a bunch of it, but there's a lot of vape stuff happening in Thailand, man. And of course, as always, in the description to this video, a link to kasad.org where you can join up, get involved, get regular email updates about all of the stuff legislatively that is going on regarding vaping here in the United States as well. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for news and advocacy. Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump in a time machine. We're going to go upstairs into my kitchen and we're going to taste some beer. All right, guys, well, welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, no atmosphere squash to speak of anymore. It's just it's just gone. We consumed it, actually. We consumed it, but it was bad, wasn't it? We consumed it, but it was bad. Sorry, it's, it sat out. Evidently, squashes on a countertop do have a shelf life. I just assumed it would last forever and like turn into a gourd at some point, and then we use it for Thanksgiving. But anyway, we're back up here uh, in my kitchen. We're here to taste some beer. This is something that I promised a few weeks ago. I promised that we were gonna drink this Country Boy Brewing Shotgun Wedding, and then in the next vlog after that, we didn't have a beer taste segment. So here we are like three weeks down the road and we're finally getting around to Shotgun Wedding from Country Boy Brewing. This was sent to me from Russ in Nashville, Tennessee. Russ from uh, from Vapor Stock Room, from Vigilante Vapors, one of my oldest friends actually in the vape industry. He sent me some beer. I already had one, but I actually really liked it. So this isn't my first tasting. I just want you to know if you think we're going into this blind, we're not. I've, I'm, I'm cheating. I've had this before. I'm going to be pouring this into an unmarked tulip style glass. It pours a brownish brown color. It's not translucent or any way in any way. I can't see through it. Looks nice and dark. Got a nice head on there, sort of a tan colored head. It kind of looks like, uh, well, I mean, it kind of looks like beer. And honestly, when I first poured it, it reminds me of a really, really dark, like dark apple cider. But I brought some juices up here to taste with this, so let's have at it. Cheers, here's to you guys. Yeah, 
It's great. This, this is a really great beer. I actually get a slight bit of, I don't want to say sour because I feel like sour is a negative flavor attribute. I get a little bit of tart on the on the finish of this. Starts off nice. It tastes like a brown ale. They say on the website, it's a brown ale. What do they say on the website? It's a brown ale brewed with bourbon soaked vanilla beans. You get a little bit of that like slight vanilla sweetness, a little bit of bourbon character but it's honestly not something that's predominant enough to pick out in the beer. To me, this kind of tastes like a little bit higher quality of like a Newcastle brown ale, like that's what it reminds me of. Maybe a little bit higher quality and maybe a little bit darker as well. Yeah, it's really nice. It's nice and clean. I get some upfront sweetness. I get some upfront like, uh, you know, slight vanilla, slight bourbony sort of experience in there as well. I'm really interested to taste it with these juices I brought up here. I brought up my two my go-to, my now go-to favorite beer pairing juices. Um, one of them is Yig and one of them is the Sage Nicotine Fall Delight, that tobacco flavor. So let's just try it on for size. We're going to try the Yig. And I almost completely did that wrong. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's fine. It's not amazing. It's a, They go well together. This is going to go better with a beer than, say, something like, you know, strawberry cheesecake or anarchist pink lemonade. You kind of have to have a little bit more of a earthy, beefy sort of vape to go really well with beers. And Yig? Yig is fine, but I think this Fall Delight is going to be even better. I've had a really hard time explaining this Fall Delight juice to people. Um, it's not a bakery. To me, it's described sometimes as a bakery in some places, but to me, it's a tobacco flavor. It tastes exactly like a very sweet tobacco flavor. In fact, apart from the Baker White tobacco, this has become one of my favorite tobaccos. This is like number two good tobacco for me. Anyway, I got it loaded up in that iconic RDA sitting on top of the Rig Mod Outlaw single 2700 Mac Mod. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. I kind of feel like using Fall Delight to do a beer pairing is almost like cheating because I know it's going to taste really good. Yeah, shit. Yeah, man. This is a great beer. I always like seeing what the top raters on Beer Advoc have to say because they always come across as a little bit like... I don't know, a little gatekeepy, you know what I mean? Or pretentious or arrogant or something like that. And so I click on the top reviews for this beer on Beer Advocate. And the first one, it's like nine paragraphs to describe this beer and his experience with the beer. Uh, this person says, I tried this beer. It poured a hazy brown with a white head, some lacing. The scent was, the scent was hints of brown bread. The taste was extremely balanced and easy to drink. The mouthfeel was creamy and smooth carbonation overall solid brown ale. Yeah, I mean, I would say something similar to that. I think this is more than a solid brown ale. I think Newcastle is a solid brown ale. I think this is a better brown ale. I think this is a stellar brown ale. Yeah, good stuff. Anyway, thank you, Russ, for sending this over my way. That's going to wrap up this beer segment. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to pop downstairs back into the office to open some vape mail. Yeah, all right. Well, it is time to do some vape mail time. And like I said, over the break, I got, I don't know, the most vape mail. So I did, and I went through, I just picked a few random packages, and I was just opening them and opening them. I'm like, I can't open all of these on camera. I seriously have like 19 packages right now. I'm not going to do like a two-hour long just vape mail segment for the vlog. So I got some packages out of the way, but that doesn't mean that there's no vape mail. I still have a bunch of vape mail sitting here, so we're just going to dive in. Got my dill pack spider co knife that I'm really excited about. I do have a garbage bag here. They are Febreze flavored, which isn't my favorite. I actually really miss the, the vanilla, like the French vanilla garbage bags. I think those smelled, I almost said tasted because I said flavored. So look, I know a lot of people have been saying, well, they're not flavored bags. They're scented bags, Nick. Duh. Saying flavored is just a thing I've always said. Flavored, even when it smell, when I smell it, I'll be like, oh, that's like uh, vanilla flavored. Even though it's, it, even though I know it's a scent. That's that's why it's a joke. That's that's called comedy, man. And I got something here from H Cigar, which I haven't got anything from H Cigar in a very long time. But this appears to be the Warwolf mod and the Toas 
Magic box? They're, they're not even trying anymore, man. The War Wolf or the Toas Magic Box. Well, the War Wolf sounds cooler, but the to I can't pass up something that says Magic Box. I want to look at this Magic Box. And while I'm opening this, I want to say H Cigar, you get a zero for packaging. You get a zero out of ten for packaging because this is the most uninspired, like boring white, sterile packaging I've ever seen, man. Nothing about this is fun, and vaping should be fun. All right, here we go, Toas Magic Box. Ugh. Oh no, oh no, good lord. Well, it's a squonker. I'm not sure what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting not a squonker, but it is a squonker, and it's got ridiculous, I mean, ridiculous, Ridiculous graphics on here. This is deeply, deeply engraved on there. Um, it looks, I mean, come on. This looks a little bit tacky. Thoughts? Let me show you a video of what this mod looks like. But yeah, as you can see, it is deeply, deeply engraved. We got some uh, wolf and I uh, guess that's another wolf. Some guys right here with the uh, little seahorse tails, I guess, or... I don't know, maybe that's their genitals? I have no idea. Deeply engraved wolf skull on there. Um, looks kind of cool. I mean, it's not super appealing to me. My first reaction when I saw this was like, ah, oh, that looks, you know, that looks cheap. That looks, that actually looks a little bit uh, tacky to me. As much of a metal guy that I am, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this just yet. I'd love to get your thoughts though. You think it looks tacky or you think it looks kind of cool and metal? It feels very, very textured. I mean, you can see kind of from a profile, it looks, I mean, that is deeply engraved on there. But yeah, it's a squonker. I'm assuming that's a mechanical button in there that you can't quite get to. And then there's a soft squonker bottle right there. All right, well, I mean, unregulated uh, squonker. This mod does also come with a tiny, 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 tiny little RDA. This is like Derringer-sized RDA. It is a tiny, minuscule little two-post. you hear that? That door... That was just wobbling around in there, wasn't it? Listen to that door play. Listen to that movement on the door. That's insane. Anyway, tiny little velocity style deck, squonk pin in the middle. Looks like it has adjustable airflow slots. It's probably going to be a perfectly fine and serviceable atomizer. Maybe a little bit loud, maybe a little bit high-pitched whistly as well. Well, I'm not super, super impressed with that Toas Magic Box. Let's see what the War Wolf is. All right, War Wolf, maybe impress me a little bit. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, this is single, uh, 18650. Really bizarre and weird and shaped oddly. It's almost like an SX style. Like it's like a tube mod almost with a, a very round 2B510 connection. And then kind of this other little handle part with buttons and up, down and a menu. And I'm assuming it has a little LCD screen on the inside. The battery uh, door on here is not marked in any way. So I'm going to put it positive side, positive side up and hope that that is correct. H cigar. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's kind of got a pretty, it's kind of got a cool little screen on there. It's kind of got a cool little screen and a cool little interface. That's actually pretty interesting. And that's actually kind of a nice little looking screen. It's a little prettier than I was expecting. I was kind of expecting just like a boring, like, you know, DNA 40 looking LCD screen in there. But this one is actually pretty nice. I can't speak for the aesthetics of this mod, but huh. All right, let's give it a shot. In fact, here, I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put that uh, Aris tank on there. Single 18650 should do just fine with a 1.5 ohm mouth to lung RTA on top. We're not a 1.5 ohm. This is a one ohm at 17 watts on the H Cigar War Wolf. Yeah, vapes great. Vapes uh, vapes a lot like that little uh, Evic Primo Mini that I love so much. The War Wolf is taller and I don't know different it's just different it's a different feel and I know this isn't a review for the war wolf I just haven't seen anything from H cigar in a long time so I, you know want to see want to see what's going on over there at H cigar 
Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna leave that set up right there, War Wolf. See what else we got here in the vape mail pile. Something from Geek Vape. It's a lot of coils, I think. Yeah, look at that. Wow, a whole mess of coils. These are uh, Clapton's and Alpha Braids and Clapton Helixes? What the shit is an Alpha Braid? It says Tidal Coil, Alien Coils, Fused Clapton's. Clapception coils? <laughs> what? Uh, Geek Vape, you're out of control, man. What is this? What is a clapception coil? Uh, oh, okay, I see what a clapception coil is. Well, for anyone curious, that is what a clapception coil uh, looks like. I'm not sure if the builders actually call these clapception coils, but Looks to be a uh, a fused Clapton, and then you clapped in the Clapton. It's a it's like a double it's like a double Clapton. And they also included two spools of mesh wire, which that terminology doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like this should just say mesh or like mesh ribbon, maybe not necessarily mesh wire. It's not a wire. Mesh is the opposite of a wire. I mean, there's wires involved in mesh. Okay, well, now my brain is just confused. Anyway, some mesh wire and a bunch of, uh, and a bunch of coils and a, and a Christmas card as well. Let's read the Christmas card from Geek Babe. I know it's way past Christmas. We're, we're into 2018 here, but it says, Merry Christmas. Look at that little pop-up Christmas tree right there. Uh, dear Nick Green, thank you for, uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and may this festival Bring abundant joy and happiness in your life, Geek Vape. Yay, thank you so much, Geek Vape. I did have a great Christmas, Geek Vape. Still got more mail to open. Oh, this is from Voopoo. I got a Voopoo thing. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your body. That's what Dwayne told me. And Voopoo, this is the U-Force sub -ohm tank. The king of flavor. Awaken the force. It's a... Yeah. All right, uh, it's a sub ohm tank. Sub ohm tank from Vupu called the U Force. And from the looks of it, it looks to be a sub ohm tank. You can tell that it's a sub ohm tank because of the way that it is. I'm just kidding, I can't steal that joke. That joke's from somebody, I can't steal that joke. Yeah, there you go. Looks like a, uh, looks like a sub ohm tank. Not sure what else to say about it other than there is airflow on the bottom, there is filling on the top, there is a coil head on the inside, and I'm assuming that once I fill it up that it will vape much like a sub ohm tank would. Oh, this I'm actually really excited about. This is something from uh, District 5. I haven't got anything from District 5 in a while, but I used to really enjoy their products. I used a lot of their drip tips for a very long time. What did District 5 send out? Okay, this is some, uh, this is some very complicated vape mail. It says, in this box you will find three envelopes, each with corresponding labels to a week. They must be open, so no peaking. They're our Christmas gift to you, but we still wanted to keep them a surprise. Each envelope contains instructions, so please read them carefully. Please open the envelope labeled week one, and you will find your first set of instructions. What? All right, well, I'm going to open all of these uh, at once, but I guess we'll follow the instructions. Let's start with week one. Can't imagine what is in here. Uh, looks to be a lot of drip tips. Oh, good lord. Probably like, I don't know, 13 drip tips in here. The Tact 5 Type 3. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely a drip tip. This is called the Tact 5 Type 3 Drip Tip. A very similar drip tip. This is the Tact 5 Type 3 in green. Um, but the Tact 5, the design and feel of the Tact 5 tips are inspired by tactical machinery and are sure to fall in line with any operator's loadouts. I'm assuming that's some uh, military terminology in there, possibly. I'm assuming we're going to get to these as well, but it says one tip. The one tips are wide board, custom handcrafted resin pieces, specially formulated by D5. We wanted one tips to be the one tip that you've been searching your whole vape life for. Oh, that's what these are. These are the one tips. I have some one tips. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's these guys. It, it's these. Uh, it's these sort of. Let me show you. Let me take a picture of these real fast. But it's these like uh, half stainless steel, half resin. I believe they're 810 goon compatible, so they're stainless steel on the bottom or aluminum. I can't imagine that that's actually stainless steel. It's a, probably aluminum on the bottom and then resin and then the resin unscrews and you can screw it down and you just have this little 
thin little stripe of resin at the top. It's not like, you know, like a DHD tip where it's full, you know, full acrylic. You get the full color of the tip. You only get a little stripe of it here at the top. And I cannot find the threads to get this back in right now. Ah, there they are. So yeah, cool. Got, got some, got some drip tips. And those are just the week one drip tips. What do you think's in the week two drip tips? I, I was never a part of this District 5, but, uh, Okay, there's there's instructions for, for posting uh, photos. Five photos of the Type 2 variant tacked five tips and post them on Instagram. Pair them up with other products. Like we said, we wanted these tips to be the one tip to rule them all. JK, you will also find in this envelope Type 2 variant tacked five tips in the second design. These There's a lot. There's a lot of tips. And District 5 does this. They've done this in the past and it looks like they're continuing to do it where they release a fuck ton of tips that all have like different names and number designations and they come in like 18 quadrillion different colors. Okay, so this is a Tact 5 Type 2. It's aluminum and it looks like it has a gear on top. I can't imagine that being very comfortable, but cool. Just, you know, a lot more drip tips. I'm not gonna sit here and play show and tell with every drip tip that's in here. I just wanna say there's a lot of different varieties and there's a lot of different just drip tips all together. Probably sent me 30 drip tips all together in here. Instructions on the black based one tips and type one variant tacked five tips. What, remember when drip tips weren't confusing? <laughs> Ah, that's, uh, that, that, that's a lot of drip tips, District 5. That's a lot of uh, drip tips and a lot of instructions on how to post these drip tips. Of course, as always, yes, thank you, District 5, for sending over some drip tips. I'm going to put a bunch of these drip tips, obviously, in, like, you know, $2 sales and stuff like that. All right, and then so this one is black aluminum on the bottom, and then it's got what looks like a resin or acrylic stripe around the top that is greenish and goldish uh, in color. Cool. I mean, yeah, these are pretty dope looking little drip tips. Um, I, District 5 used to make a, a lot of tips and caps and they have the half moons and the apple bottoms and they, they kind of went crazy with all of their, their tips and stuff. And it looks like they're kind of doing a lot more. I mean, look at that. Look at all these drip tips right here. Yeah, cool. So I'll probably use, I don't know, three or four of these. And then, uh, you know, we're going to put a bunch into $2 sales. $2 sales both uh, here in the vlog, which happen very rarely, but mostly $2 sales uh, for my Patreons for the Yo Yo Cool Kids Club. And I believe this is just cotton. This is Royal Mail. This came from the UK, and I believe this is just cotton. That white stuff, world-class organic cotton. Now, they make a lot of claims on this cotton. It says 100% pure organic cotton cultivated from the United States, unbleached and pesticide-free. No dry spells, just fresh, clean flavor right from the first hit. Long-lasting, highly absorbent, highly absorbent, luxurious build by Vapors four vapors, that white stuff. Well, I don't think I have anything that I can set up just yet. We got two more packages to open, but if there's something I have to build to vape on this vlog, I don't know, let's check out this cotton. Oh yeah, it feels a lot like uh, Native Wix. It feels like the, a lot like the Native Wix version one. It's very, very dense. It's dense like bread. It feels very dense. This is very much a, uh, you know, pull it apart like cotton bacon sort of pull it, pull your strips off of it and uh, and use it. Anyway, I don't know, let's give it a try. And this is something I had sitting under my tree that I thought was vape mail, and then when I pulled it out to be on video here, I saw on the bottom, hashtag not vape mail. So I can no longer assume that this is vape mail. This is, oh, holy shit, this is an ornament. Wait, what's going on here? Nick, thank you for everything. I wanted to get you beer, but I came up with this. So this fly is called the Grim. Like I mentioned in my first email, I tie flies. So when you invent a new fly, you get to name it, hence the Grim. It's for steelhead. And please, no need for a shout out or to show it off. I just, uh, I just saw how into Christmas you are and thought it would be cool. Again, thank you. I'm headed to North County for some wet burritos. Cheers, Matt. Matt, get, Matt sent me a Christmas ornament with a fly for fly fishing that he, a fly and hook 
for fly fishing that he made and put in here in this bulb and it's called the Grim and it's in like a cool glass old school glass bulb. Well that is very very cool man. I mean that's not vape mail. This is better than vape mail. This is this is sentimental. This is a sentimental thing here. Well thank you man. I apologize. I took my tree down. I could have put it on my tree but uh, I'm definitely going to save this for next year and it is absolutely going to go on my office tree right right here right in the background of all my videos. Matt Thank you, seriously, so much. That is very, very cool. And it's named The Grim. I mean, come on. That is super cool, Matt. Thank you. All right, I got just uh, two more, two more packages left here for vape mail. Let's see what's in here. DHL, no idea. Oh, it's a Joy Tech thing. It is a Joy Tech thing. It is another Joy Tech thing. This is called the Espion. Espion? And again, unfortunately, Joy Tech is winning no awards for cool packaging. Oh, yeah, this is... <laughs> Good Lord, Joy Tech. Come on, man. This is the, look, Joy Tech, I, I get it. I get it. You, you crank out a lot of mods and I get it. This, this mod is shaped and feels exactly like at least 10 other mods that have come out of Joy Tech in China this year. It's that shape. It's that like sort of rounded rectangle shape. Big fire button over here, big screen on the front. Dual 18650s go in the bottom. I'm assuming this probably has some sort of really interesting display because that seems to be the trend in China right now. Whether we want it or not is a very elaborate displays. Okay, yeah, that is a, that's actually a really beautiful looking display. All right, there we go. Back to power mode. Okay, well, cool. Well, there you go. You know what? It's got a pretty cool display. It's just that same shape and size, you know, like the cuboid, the cuboid tap, so many mods, so many mods have this exact same shape. They're, it's just, I feel like they're just using the same blueprint. They're like, well, let's put a bigger screen on it, but keep that same shape, man. We gotta keep that same shape. China shit is always just packaged like shit. It's just in a box. It's like, here, here's your shit. Just open it and vape it. And also, does packaging matter to anybody? Does packaging matter to you? Does it, does it affect the way that you view or see a mod or a product or anything like that? Because I can appreciate like really cool packaging, like nicely branded, well thought out, cool packaging, cool display. Uh, you know, I like packaging. I like cool packaging. It seems like all the stuff that I get from China, especially Joy Tech, it's just like a white box, just a bunch of vape crap in a white box. There is a bottom flow sub ohm tank on there. And Joy Tech actually has pretty good sub ohm tanks. I've liked, oh, this glass is broken. <laughs> What the crap? Yeah, well, there you go. That's what you get for throwing your sub ohm tank just inside a box. Literally, there was nothing holding this sub ohm tank in place. It was just in a box. I will say, though, that the display on this is very cool. This is a very cool display on here. And good. <laughs> good. We need new, good, better displays on mods. Personally, I like mods like the Hexome that you, like, adjust to taste. But if it's going to have a screen, I'd like it to have a pretty screen. And I think now we're finally past the LCD screen. That really old, like, you know, DNA 20, DNA 40, even even like the DNA 200 had that LCD screen. I feel like these newer screens that are coming out, like that Cylon from Smoant, like this guy, like this Espion from Joy Tech, they're getting cooler. The displays are getting a lot cooler. And yeah, I mean, that Espion could be something. I like to set something up for my vape mail. And right now that Espion is really the only thing that I have any interest in setting up. But do not fret, there is one last package from DHL from China. This is from Hell Vape, so there could be something cool in here. Boxes taped together. I spent all that time cutting through tape because I thought the box was gonna open and then it's just two boxes taped together. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, there are two new dead rabbits. There is the dead rabbit challenge cap priest. And then there is the dead rabbit SQ. Dead rabbit Squa, I think I have seen this on Vape and Heathen's page. It's a 22 millimeter more squonker friendly version of the dead rabbit. Oh yeah, look at that. He did like, uh, that's weird. That's really weird. Uh, that's weird. Okay. 
Cool. Well, that's weird. It's kind of like a, a half Dead Rabbit deck. It's just a single coil banger. There you go. That's nice. That's a cool little size. That little 22 millimeter size on there. I wish I wish it was a little bit shorter. It's a tall 22 millimeter Adderminder. It reminds me of the old like uh, tugboats or the tugboat V2s that were real tall with those tall drip tips. That's what this reminds me of. It's a smaller diameter, but it's, it's tall. And it's tall because he's got tall posts in there. Anyway, cool. The Dead Rabbit SQ. I don't know what this other one is. This might just be a cap. Is this just a cap for the original? dead rabbit oh yeah yeah it's just a uh it's just a new cap for the dead rabbit with alternate airflow completely non-adjustable airflow and it looks exactly uh, i hate to say this it looks exactly like the airflow from the bonza rda it's a lot of holes a lot of holes a lot of holes like this a lot of holes like this those anarchist cloud caps back in the day that was basically the same thing it was just a lot of holes and yeah it makes good airflow like the old mutation x's a lot of holes a lot of holes, a lot of holes, a lot of holes. And I'm sure it's gonna gr vape great. I'm sure it's gonna feel awesome on there too. Where is my rabbit? Where's my dead rabbit? I was just using it. Now I'm gonna have to track down my dead rabbit and I'm gonna put this top cap on there. But what I wanna do is I want to build this little guy. I wanna build that dead rabbit SQ. And the AFC goes from those big slots that you're used to on the dead rabbit down to just these little holes. Just very, very little holes. It's a little too open to be like a full mouth to lung, but it is kind of like a restricted lung hit, I guess. And you can close it down to just one tiny little hole on one side. Really interested to try this as a single coil. You can do a single airflow, a single tiny little hole there. I wonder if he intended that to be mouth to lung or if he intended that to be a clouds bro clouds like restricted lung hit because that's all I get out of all of these airflows is either a lung hit or a restricted lung hit. I even like the, the stock. The stock dead rabbit slots on there are my favorite. They just feel so nice. Anyway, I guess uh, a lot of that previous stuff was uh, out of focus and I didn't realize it in time. But uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, out of everything I opened, I, I am going to build a single coil on this dead rabbit SQ. I'm going to put it on some sort of squonker. I'm going to find a squonker and I'm going to put it on there and uh, we're going to vape it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean all this up. I'm going to clean up my desk area and I'm going to build this real, real fast. But as I say like almost every week through the magic of video editing it will seem seamless so yeah i went ahead and built that dead rabbit sq i built it with a uh coil from between two beards coils by ryan it was one of his aliens i just put it in there a single coil came out to 0.2 it was easy enough to install it's a lot like building on the dead rabbit you just drop them down in you screw in the screws you wick it and then that's kind of it and i must say i was really skeptical of this at first because of how high the coil was and how high the airflow was. The coil is set up really high in the deck. This is not a low pro atomizer. This is not a low profile atomizer. This is a tall atomizer. And on the inside, you have tall posts and you put your coil on top of these tall posts. So you have these wicks kind of going down into your juice well right there. And the airflow, like the dead rabbit, set up really high. I ended up putting this on that uh, Asmodus square Squonker, the one I can never remember the name of. The Spruza, yes, the Spruza. It's the Squonker that doesn't have like a squishy bottle. It's got the little pump action on the side. And what I noticed, I wicked this up and it was fresh wicks and I started pumping juice up and it just kept pumping juice up, juice up, juice up. And it kind of filled up the reservoir down here, but the coils and the airflow was above that, was, was higher above that. So this almost becomes like a tiny, tiny little RDTA, assuming that you don't pump this full of juice and then just pull your top cap off. I mean, the same thing used to happen in the original Dead Rabbit. If you really juiced it up and you had a lot of juice down there in the juice well, and then you pop your top off, yeah, it's gonna leak everywhere. On this, when I'm squonking juice in there, it fills up, it fills up the bottom, especially on the Spruza, because the Spruza squonker doesn't have a, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better term, it doesn't have like an auto return system. 
system. In most squonkers, when you squeeze the bottle and then you let go of the bottle, when you let go of the bottle, it sucks some of the juice back and those other uh, silicone bottles take longer to suck back and the rigid hard ones, they just go and they suck it all back right away. Well, this doesn't suck back any juice at all. It just pumps your juice up there and leaves your juice up there. So I honestly kind of feel like this is a good fit for the Dead Rabbit SQ because I can pump some juice in there and it's just gonna stay in there until I vape it out, until it wicks to the coil and vape it out. Because the squonking doesn't directly get onto your coils and because your coils are set up so high and you have wicks going down into the juice well, whenever I give it one or two, three pumps, I kinda just wait. I kinda just wait for a second. I might actually even give it a little bit of a fire without inhaling just to warm up those coils because the juice is attracted to the warmth you see and it speeds up the wicking process. So yeah, this uh, Beards Coil, Coils by Ryan, came out to 0.19, got it set to 50 watts. Let's have our first toot. I filled this up with that hooch, pure banana juice from a few weeks ago in the vlog because I have been craving it and craving it. Yeah. Very nice. It's got that same dead rabbit slot smooth airflow. And I actually did wick this and the retro vaping and the random juice tasting with that white stuff cotton. And it's a lot easier to work with than I thought it would be. Of all of the like peel and roll and wick your coils sort of cotton, this is actually really good. It's not too dense. It's not about that. We're talking about the dead rabbit. Let me have a couple more pulls here. That was literally the first toot you just saw. Nice, very nice flavor. It's got a 22 millimeter diameter, so that flavor is gonna be banging on the inside. And this is only a single coil. Granted, it is an alien, which is gonna give me really good flavor anyway, but even as a single coil alien, still giving me nice, nice flavor. And the Dead Rabbit Airflow, that traditional inward slot airflow from the Dead Rabbit. I love it and it is on here as well. It's nice and smooth. And even if I pop this off, okay, yeah, I see a little bit of juice in there. Let's pump some more juice in there. One, two, three. Yeah, and then now my wicks are kind of just dangling down into this little reservoir. It's literally like full of juice down there. The Spruza, like I said earlier, does not pull back any juice. It just sits in there. So I have a feeling that if I tilted this on its side, yeah, juice, juice, juice. And that's not necessarily a fault of the Dead Rabbit SQ at all. That's really more speaking to this squonker. It does not recycle its juice back. Whatever you pump up there, you have to vape through it. Thankfully, it's all holding the juice in there. I haven't had any leaks or even any misting or droplets or anything coming out of the bottom. The bottom is nice and sealed up on this. And don't worry, I was just dripping on my vape mat here. This has like 18,000 different flavors on it. Because of all the juice I spill in here, my office just smells smells like a constant vape meat. But yeah, cool, little 22 millimeter squonker dead rabbit single coil banger. I'm gonna leave it on the spruza for a while, mostly because I'm enjoying the flavor I get from this and the flavor I'm getting is that hooch pure banana. I'm not 100% sold on this uh, squonker. We're not talking about the squonker right now, but I just wanna throw it out there. Not 100% sold on this little spruza squonker. I think I prefer my squonkers to suck back in the juice, to recycle the juice, and this one does not. But it's not a review for this right now anyway. We're literally just testing out the Dead Rabbit SQ. And if I had to say one last thing about this Dead Rabbit SQ, the vape that I'm getting from it, you know how I have that Luna, that little Luna squonker with the original recipe recoil that's more of like a mellow, unregulated single 18650 vape. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have those like dual or triple 18650 Drip Tech DS, Clouds Bro Clouds. You put like, you know, a goon with a real low build on there or like a huge RDA, like a rebel with a big build on there and you can just have Clouds Bro Clouds squonkiness. This this RDA is kind of like in the middle. It's a little bit more cloudy than my Mellow Vape, but it's not quite as like cloud chasey as say like a Drip Tech DS type of vape. It's very much in the middle. I can put like a semi hard toot on this, get a little bit of a cloud chasing experience, but overall I feel like this was designed for flavor, maybe a little bit more mellow of a flavor vape.
Nice. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to leave this set up. I want to vape this a whole lot more. But that's the Dead Rabbit SQ built and, and wicked and being used on that Spruza. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is, well, I am going to eat lunch. And then what we're going to do right after lunch is we are going to dive into some retro vaping. And I have something set up right now that just looks ridiculous. I can't wait to show it to you guys. So retro vaping. All right, guys, well, uh, I got a bubble in my throat. Oh, I love it when that happens. I sound a little bit weird because I have a bubble in my throat. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I did eat lunch. It was a chicken Caesar salad, in case anyone was curious, from Trader Joe's, and it was delicious. But we're up here in my very well-lit corner of my living room to do some retro vaping. And I posted a picture on Instagram, and I don't think anybody got it right so far. But what we have to retro vape today is an RDA. This came out, I uploaded my review for it in May of 2015. And so, I don't know, would we consider this retro vaping yet? Certainly from looking at it, it certainly looks like an old, old atomizer. I'm talking about this atomizer that I got from Vape Naked called the Flare. Now, this is just, okay, A, look at the size of this thing. It is huge and it has a huge drip tip. This is a tall, huge, tall atomizer with a huge, tall, huge, tall drip tip. And in 2015, I don't want to say that this was like a normal thing, but uh, this is kind of what atomizers looked like in 2015. We didn't have a lot of cool, like, low-profile stuff. Even the Tugboat V2 was still a really tall atomizer. For some reason, tall atomizers didn't bother us very much back then. But this is the Flare atomizer. And I remember vaping it a lot in 2015, and I wasn't... Eh, really super stoked on it. I think the words I used back then were meh. And all it is on the inside is a very simple two post deck. I've built this with 24 gauge Canthal. It's an eight wrap. It came out to right around 0.2 on it. I'm gonna be running it on this D-Pro RDA and it is freshly wicked right now. I haven't put any juice on it, but the juice I'm gonna put on it is Skull and Crossbones from uh, Vigilante from Vapor Stock Room. Juice these guys up. And the deck is a lot, honestly, a lot like a lot of decks that are out there now today, it's just a two post, two post deck. It's got a juice well in the bottom for your wicks to go in. It's a little bit tall. I mean, by today's standards, it's 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 very, very tall. And yeah, you kind of just uh, build your coils. You have them in here. You have your wicks. I mean, if you've ever built an RDA ever, you know exactly what to do in here. In fact, the post holes in this RDA are a little bit on the big side. I think they were able to accommodate like some fancier coils, fused Claptons and aliens and the like. But right now, I just have some simple round wire in there. Let's fire it. Yeah, looks good. Looks like this is going to be a classic cloudy, cloudy experience. And this is one of those RDAs that like in 2014, a lot of RDAs and a lot of mods were marketed this way, but this was considered a competition RDA. And a lot of people, you know, including myself, you kind of scoff a little bit at the whole competition thing, but once upon a time, not so much anymore, but once upon a time, easily back in 2015, easily back in 2014 through most of 2015, the competition, the vape competition scene was a thing. It was it was an actual thing. I myself went to many, many cloud comps, many serious cloud comps back in the day. Vape Capital Studios used to have a $10,000 cloud comp. If you won this cloud comp, just for blowing a cloud, you could win $10,000 thousand dollars. That is insane. So yeah, when people say comp level, like competition atomizer, competition mech mod, that's not what, I mean, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about like, oh, well, this is just a really huge, this is a really cool mech mod. It's a competition level mech mod. It wasn't meant to be arrogant or presumptuous in any way. These mech mods and these atomizers were literally built for people cloud comping on a regular basis. And now that's kind of not really a super big thing anymore. We did a few cloud comps and a few trick comps on the vape tour, but it wasn't anything ever really serious. And it wasn't like a, you know, a, a big uh, a big production or anything like that. It was, a lot of it is done now. It's just for fun. I like to cloud comp people. Sure, just back to back, see who blows the biggest cloud. Why not? It's fun. So yeah, the Flare RDA. And look at this drip tip. It's this drip tip 
threaded in here. I am having the hardest time getting this drip tip out. I was gonna try to swap it over to a different drip tip and I just couldn't do it. But anyway, it's got an internal AFC. So the AFC pops down on the inside. And then this pops down right there. When I look through it, yeah, dude, I can see my coils right there. The overall construction, the overall fit and finish of this RDA, eh, well, I don't know. It wasn't really much to write home about. It was fine. It was stainless steel. And like I said, it was a two post with a big deep juice well, a really tall, tall top cap, and then a very, very tall drip tip. But anyway, this is built. This is wicked. It's loaded up with skull and crossbones sitting on the D-Pro unregulated slash regulated slash smart mod. But yeah, let's give it a try. Okay, first of all, that airflow is plentiful and it is shockingly smooth. Oh yeah, it kind of apes like that. It's kind of not amazing. It's kind of not awful. It's just kind of there. Yeah, I mean, it vapes, it vapes fine. I can taste this juice. I can tell that it tastes like skull and crossbones. Although it's not like great flavor. It's not like really good flavor. It's just kind of there. And this thing just looks ridiculous. And it's so heavily laser engraved. They have VN, Storm Chaser. And this came from Vape Naked. In fact, I think I got this from Vape Naked at the first uh, SoCal Vape Expo in San Diego. But they engraved Grim on it. They engraved Flare on it. They laser engraved a, a cloud with a lightning bolt on it. Four of them around the top. So it was a heavily branded RDA as well. And it vapes fine, but like in my original video, meh was the word I used. It's very meh. It vapes fine. In retrospect, it vapes like a lot of atomizers do, you know? Smooth, swooshy airflow, okay flavor, plenty of clouds, bro clouds. I just couldn't get over how this looked. It's just so tall and large and just looks so wacky. Yeah, there you go. Not much else to say. It's just a really old ass atomizer that I found and I was like, yeah, we're gonna vape that on the retro vaping segment. And honestly, it vapes fine. It's not really impressive. In fact, after this retro vaping, I'll probably tear down this atomizer. I'll probably put it back in my tackle box and I probably will forget that it exists for another three years. There's just not much uh, memorable about this atomizer. In fact, I'm gonna link down in the description to my original flare review video where you can check that out if you are interested in my old office. But uh, that's it for retro vaping. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to go back downstairs to my office and we're going to do some getting to know Grim Green. <clears throat> All right, well, here we are back downstairs. It's time to do a uh, real quick getting to know Grim Green question. If anybody has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered on this here vlog program, just send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, getting to know Grim Green, and it will possibly get read and used accordingly on this show. Right now, I have an email from Tyler. Tyler wrote in and said, what's going on, man? I'm a huge fan of yours. I'm sitting here watching the bro trip videos, and I wanted to know the story on how you and Omar boy met. You guys remind me a lot of me and my best bro, Andrew. Hope to see this in a vlog one day. Thanks for just being you, man, and let's keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely. Tyler, first of all, shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Andrew. Sounds like you guys are bros. And bros are good. They're important to have in your life. And uh, I met Dwayne. So I met Dwayne in March, March, February of 2015. I had not been in San Diego that long and I didn't really know anybody down here in like the SoCal, uh, you know, San Diego, LA area vape scene. I had a few friends, acquaintances, people like CJ Vaping Monkey I knew of and, and, you know, had been friends with and talked to a lot, but he was all the way up in OC and I didn't really have any friends, friends down here. I was kind of just getting to know Southern California a little bit, but I went to the SoCal Vape Expo where I got that flair on. RDA. SoCal Vape Expo was up in uh, Mission Valley and it was at a big convention center and I kind of walked in there not knowing anybody, not having like a squad or like a group of friends that I hang out with. Like now when we go to events, like 
all of us, the squad, when we go to events, we kind of go together. And, you know, if someone else from the squad is going to be there, kind of makes the vape event like that much better. If anyone ever asks me like, oh, are you, are you going to this vape event? I'll be, I'll ask Ruby, I'll ask Dwayne, I'll ask Jess, I'll ask Kent. I'll be like, is anybody going, is anybody going to this or am I just going to go alone and my friends are going to be there? Uh... That doesn't sound as fun as if all my friends were going to be there. You know, so I go into this vape event. And I don't know anybody. I know Chelsea from Society of Vape, who's Chelsea's in Society of Vape are just not around anymore. And, and that's fine. She's, she's doing her own thing. I'm still friends with her. I still follow her on Instagram. She's she's having one, you know, wonderful, fun times outside of the vape industry, away from the vape industry. But she's a great person. And so I knew her and she was she was it. She's the person I knew at the event. And then, of course, I knew like Erica from local vape but i don't know if i i don't know at that time i wouldn't be like oh me and erica we're, we're just friends let's just let's just chill and hang out right you probably have nothing going on let's just hang out so i'm sitting there i'm sitting there at the local vape booth i'm talking to chelsea we're just shooting the shit and she's like bro have you tried anarchist wire and i said no and she's going on and on she's like oh you gotta try anarchist wire it's great it's a nichrome blend it's wonderful wire let me introduce you to Dwayne, and we'll get you some anarchist wire and so i was like cool and so i gave her my dot mod petri v1 i believe at the time and i said and she said i'm gonna put a build on this and i said cool cool and so we took it over to Dwayne and put a little build on it and, and we wicked it and i was vaping it. it was great she's like this is Dwayne. he makes anarchist and i just shook his hand and i was like oh cool what's going on good to meet you man and i instantly thought and i may have talked about this story a, a lot but I, I really like telling this story when i met Dwayne, i thought fuck man that guy is so cool like I just, I wanted Dwayne to like me and I wanted Dwayne to think I was cool because I saw him and I met him right away and he was there, you know, at the expo wearing his anarchist shirt and his SoCal flipped up brim and his Dickies pants, you know, and his Chuck Taylors with the long socks and he's just heavily tattooed guy and I was like, fuck, this guy's cool. I'm not that cool, but I want this cool guy to think that I'm cool too, you know, like... I really wanted to impress Dwayne. And as I'm thinking this in my head, now thinking back on it, it, I mean, it's ridiculous. You don't ever have to impress Dwayne. He's just the nicest guy ever. He doesn't hold anybody to some like ridiculous cool standard or anything like that. Thankfully for me, I mean, thankfully for me, he doesn't do that. And so we just, uh, he, he came out from behind the booth and we were all sitting on the couch and we were just kind of talking. We were talking about anarchist and we were talking about vaping. And we were talking about all this stuff and he was just, really such a really super cool nice dude so you know i went home after the event and i'm like yeah Dwayne. like D Dwayne was a cool dude i'm glad I, I i'm glad i met Dwayne. i feel like he's gonna be uh i feel like he's gonna be a cool dude and then and then after that after that time we didn't really talk or hang out that much and we didn't really talk or hang out that much outside of the event like after the event was over i just left and, and kind of went home and did my own you know alone nick stuff and then in uh god what month was that it must have been april so march april so fast forward to april fast forward from february march to april and we all go to niagara falls for the niagara falls vpx event which is still uh, one of my favorite event events that i have ever attended i love being in niagara falls and i liked being there again with all of my friends. Matt and V from Suck My Mod were there. Uh, Ruby Roo was there. And Omboy OC was there. And uh, we all just kind of hang out. I mean, that was the first time I met Kent at Niagara Falls. And that was really the first time that I got to like hang out with Dwayne. I first time I got to like hang out with Omboy OC. And, and it was fun. We had a great time and we were having cocktails in the bar and we were gambling and we were just kind of like really broing out, like getting to be within a very short time, like getting to be real good bros. And then after that, it was kind of just I mean, it was kind of just all downhill from there. We became bros. We became friends. We started going to vape events together. We started doing the bro trips. We shot some ridiculous videos. We shot those like, you know, those build tutorials, the the alien or the, the Hellfire Gargoyle Hoof coil build tutorial, which if you haven't checked out the Gargoyle Hoof uh, build tutorial, you should definitely go watch that. I believe it's on the local vape YouTube. I'll throw a link to it down in the description, but that was some of the most fun that Dwayne and I hit have ever had together. It was 
ridiculous. But Dwayne's just just Dwayne's just one of those guys. One of those guys that I instantly got along with. I thought, fuck, well, we're gonna be friends. He's just such a genuinely good dude. We can not hang out for like three months and then hang out and by by minute one of hanging out, it's like it's like we just picked up where we left off. It's like bros, you know, just Nick and Dwayne. The, that whole Grimyock thing. And it's great. It's honestly great to have you know, have a friend and work with someone who's so, so great, so nice, so trustworthy. He's just, I can't say enough nice things about Dwayne. I feel like I'm a better person now for just having known Dwayne. He's one of the most stand up dudes that I've ever met inside the vape industry, outside of the vape industry. I just love the man. And that's how we met was at the uh, SoCal Vape Expo 2015. Now, if you ask Dwayne this story, he's going to tell you a different story. He seems to remember meeting me or at least seeing me, but he seems to remember meeting me at ECC 2014, and I have no recollection, zero recollection of meeting Dwayne at ECC 2014, but he's like, yeah, it was Local Vape. Remember Lonnie and the Standard were there, and they had the double-decker bus and Local Vape, and I was building, and I was like, I remember all of that. I remember the Standard. I remember Lonnie, and I remember the bus, and I remember the Local Vape compound. I literally have no recollection of meeting you whatsoever at all in my head. So 2015 is when I consider us like we had officially met and we had officially become, uh, we had officially become, uh, you know, acquaintances and then it turned into uh, bros and it's ridiculous. In fact, in a few weeks, I'm going to have a whole travel vlog. I'm going to have a whole bro trip, me and Dwayne and Kent and Coil Turd and M Turk, I believe, are all going out to Dumont Dunes to, uh, you know, drive around quads and jump on dirt bikes and stuff like this. It should be a lot of really fun times. I'm bringing my all my camera equipment. We're going to shoot a bunch of stuff. I'm bringing my cameras. I'm going to bring my drone. So hopefully we can get some dope desert footage of, with the drone as well. But yeah, Tyler, thank you so much for writing in. That's that's the story of me and Dwayne, me and Omboy OC. And like I said earlier, if anybody else has any getting to know Grim Green questions that you would like to see answered on this show, hopefully not too intrusive, but I think we're we're, we're at a point with each other now that we can be maybe a little bit intrusive and I'm okay with that but send them on over Nick at grimgreen.com just mark them getting to know Grim Green uh, I generally don't reply via email but I do read all of them and I all save them I save them all in their own special folder for these getting to know Grim Green segments so if you have any send them over but yeah that's going to wrap up getting to know Grim Green we're just going to keep this train going and we're going to rock right into some viewer mail All right, well, I do have a few viewer mails to answer today. And once again, much like the Getting to Know Grim Green segment, if anybody has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this show, just send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com, just mark them viewer mail. And those are ones, I actually do reply to those a lot. I reply to a lot of viewer mails. So if you send in a viewer mail hoping, cool, I really hope he answers this on the vlog, there's basically like a 50-50 chance that I'll just answer it like via email. You know, when I'm going through and I'm, and I'm answering emails, sometimes I just reply to viewer mails. And there's a few interesting ones and stuff like that that I keep to, to read on this show because I feel like they're valuable to the viewers, to my subscribers, to the community at large. And this is one of those examples. Uh, Mike, Mike writes in, Michael writes in, and this actually wasn't marked as a viewer mail, but Michael wrote in and said, uh, hey Nick, my name is Fletcher. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. His name is Fletcher, not Mike. Why did I think his name was Mike? His name is not Mike. His name is Fletcher. He says, I've been watching for years and I never miss a vlog. Now, I just want to warn everybody. When I first read this email, it was confusing to me. So I'm going to try to explain it in a way that is not confusing because I think Mr. Fletcher here makes some pretty good points. He says, I smoked for 26 years solid. And thanks to my nephew who introduced me to vaping, I quit Halloween 2015, which is the date of my birth which is the date of the birth of my late mother who passed away from COPD a month prior to that. I am so sorry for your loss. He says, my question is this. If you remember back in the day when big tobacco was under the microscope and labels like light and ultralight were banned from packaging and the tobacco companies were forced to divulge that light and ultralight cigarettes were just as harmful as full flavor cigarettes. Wasn't that essentially admitting that nicotine was not, in fact, the cancer-causing carcinogenic 
carcinogenic ingredient that people thought it was. I think that's worth addressing. I would love for you to mention this in a vlog. Sorry for the lengthy email. Please, please feel free to use my name or any content enclosed therein. Very, very official, Fletcher. Very official. I like that. Also, if you could send a shout out to my nephew, Andrew, it would mean the world to me. He never gave up on me and made sure I always hung in there, especially during the sometimes difficult transition from traditional combustible cigarettes. Thanks for all you do and let's keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely. Nephew, Andrew, boom, you are definitely, use this camera, boom, you are definitely shouted out. So yeah, a, a, a while ago, oh, I mean a while ago, probably decades ago at this point, but uh, the ultralight light and ultralight cigarettes were lower nicotine cigarettes. So if you bought ultralight cigarettes, you were ha you were getting less nicotine. Not all light and ultralight cigarettes had less nicotine in them, but the majority of the light and ultralight cigarettes had less nicotine in them. They had less flavor, less tar, and less nicotine in them. But what science found was that these cigarettes, even with less nicotine in them, were no better for you. Meaning that they had just as many carcinogenic compounds in them as cigarettes with the same amount of nicotine, or should I say, a normal level of nicotine in them. And the cigarette companies were trying to market these as like a little bit healthier. It's like, oh look, here's our light and ultra light cigarettes. They're not as strong as a regular cigarette. They have a little bit less tar in them and they might or might not have less nicotine in them. And basically what the government and the FDA said was, no, you can't market them that way. And so now you don't see a lot of like light or ultra light cigarettes. In fact, I can't think of any light or ultra light cigarettes that still exist. They were basically forced to get rid of that terminology because it was misleading. They were saying just because there's less nicotine, nicotine in it doesn't mean you're at any less risk of cancer, which in a really roundabout way, Fletcher is correct. If you have a cigarette and then you take some of the nicotine out of it, and then this is the cigarette that you're selling and the government and the FDA and science still says, no, that's still a cigarette. It is still really bad for you. Well, what about the nicotine we took out of it? Shouldn't these be uh, actually be a little bit safer for you? Or is that saying that the nicotine that you took out of this tobacco in and of itself is not a carcinogen? Because if the nicotine that you take out of a cigarette is a carcinogen, then that means the overall carcinogen level of your cigarette would go down if there was less nicotine in it right? But even without this nicotine, it's still the same level of carcinogen. And so in a roundabout way, yeah, it kind of makes sense that nicotine in and of itself, of course, we know this now, I mean, basically empirically, just look up nicotine, just research nicotine on Google and you will find loads of information. It is not a carcinogen. But even back in the day, they were saying in a roundabout way, not directly, and this is probably not what they intended to say, by this, but in a roundabout way, they were saying, yeah, nicotine is not a carcinogen because if you take it out of cigarettes, the cigarette is still a carcinogen. Thank you so much, Fletcher, for writing in. That's a very interesting topic to bring up. Maybe this is something we can discuss uh, in the future as well, but seriously, I would encourage everybody, everybody out there to do some research on nicotine. Read studies, read papers, read articles about nicotine and how it affects your body and the level of carcinogens that are in it because it's zero. <coughs> oh yeah. I got another uh, viewer mail here from Mike Smiter and this isn't one that uh, this isn't one that he wrote in for a viewer mail. I, I, I've, I've known Mike for a little bit. Um, I met him I believe for the first time at ECC last year. He is just a stand up guy. Just a very cool dude. He lives and works up in Canada in the vape industry. He's the one that gifted me that V God Pro box mod that I used to love so much. But Mike Smiter wrote in and this is just something I thought was really funny. Uh, he says, the atmosphere squash always makes me laugh because I'm a child and here's why. You're going to learn some Hungarian here. Squash in Hungarian is tuk, pronounced like tuk. Tuk can also be used when referring to your dong. Tok jo, soft Y, pronounced like yo. Okay, so it's, it's tok yo is a way of saying awesome. Yo means good, so squash good, or dick good means awesome. So yeah, there you go. Merry Christmas or, oh, I can't remember. I, no, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, Mike Smiter. 
Bulldog, nope, not even gonna try. Not even going to try, sir. So basically, in Hungarians, the word squash and the word dick are interchangeable. Cool, awesome Hungarians, awesome. I've got another viewer mail here from a guy named Scott. Scott writes in and says, hey Grim, Scott here. You gave my two sons, Zach and Warren, a shout out about a year ago for getting me off the stinkies. Anyway, I wanted to let you know that this December 23rd is my one year of not smoking. I still believe that without you and my two sons, I would still be lighting up. Thank you for being a great friend and inspiration in my life, and I hope all the best for you and Casey. Much love, brother. Let's keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely. And that isn't necessarily like a viewer mail that's like a question or like a, you know, and anything like that. It's just, I just like sharing success stories. December 23rd is Scott's one year vape anniversary. That first year is a huge year, you guys. I remember my first year vapeversary. I remember all of my vapeversaries, but I remember the first year vapeversary when you go one entire year without smoking, without lighting up a cigarette, you just feel powerful. You feel empowered. You feel, you feel confident. You feel great. You know what I mean? It's a very inspiring thing to go one full year without cigarettes. It, it just feels wonderful. And let me tell you, Scott, that as years go on, one year becomes two years, becomes three years. It just gets easier and easier as you go along or as you go long enough to eventually maybe stop vaping if that's your end game. This month, this month on January 27th will be nine years for me. Nine years without a cigarette. And I got to tell you, it, it feels good, man. So Scott, thank you so much for writing in. Got another email here from uh, Cameron. Cameron writes to us and says, hello there. I'm a new subscriber to your channel. Have you ever had someone in your life that just refused to stop smoking? Well, my mom has been smoking for a long time and I would like your input. She refuses to try vaping in the slightest. I know it's her decision on things and I shouldn't what? And I shouldn't and couldn't make her, but I don't want her to suffer for her decision. Thank you for everything you do. I look up to you and hope you can at least hope I can do at least half of the things that you do to help others. Uh, you can use my name in your vlog if you put it in one. Yeah, absolutely, Cameron. And don't you don't need to compare yourself to me or to anybody else uh, at all. You can do as many good things as you want and, and that, is the, that is the victory right there. It's not less of a victory because someone else did more things. So Cameron, yeah, that is a, uh, that, that's a, that's a really tough question to answer. I have personally not come across anybody in, in my personal life or in my family or in my friends or anything like that that is simply refused to stop smoking, like just refused, like, no, I just want to smoke. And here's the thing. You kind of just have to let them be, be their own person, live their own life and make their own decisions. And I know it sucks. It sucks vaping and having someone you love smoke and just refuse, just refuse to even stop smoking or refuse to even try vaping. It, it sucks. It's incredibly frustrating. And it's even worse when it's someone in your own family. And so because I haven't been through that, I don't I don't know what that is like. I'm not gonna have any real good advice for you. The only thing I can think to say is do it out of love. Do it because you give a shit. And tell your mom that. Be like, the only reason that I care, the only reason I want you to even try vaping is because I care. It's because I give a shit. It's because I don't want to see you laying in a hospital bed with COPD. I don't want to see you suffering. I don't want to see you hacking up a lung. It's because I love you and it's because I give a shit. And it's because vaping worked for me or you, Cameron. I know it's difficult and it's hard to have these conversations sometimes. So I wish you all of the best. Uh, me, I think I can speak for everybody watching this. We're all pulling for you, man. We're all pulling for you. We're all pulling for your mom. I just, I want to send you nothing but good thoughts and good vibes because I would like, an, I would like an email from Cameron in like six months that says, hey, my mom finally switched, or hey, my mom tried vaping for the first time and, and, and she kinda likes it. You can't 
force people you love to do things that you want them to do because you love them. You have to encourage them to do it themselves. And the way that you do that is by caring and by giving a shit. Kindness always wins. Don't get mad or frustrated at your mom. Kindness always wins. And honestly, Cameron's mom, if you're watching this, uh, vaping works. And there are a lot of vapors right now really hoping, all of my subscribers right now are really hoping that maybe we'll, maybe you'll just give it a shot. Just for nothing else, just for Cameron's sake. But honestly, Cameron, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in everything. And I would love to, like I said, to get an email from you a few months down the road with some maybe a little bit different news in it. Anyway, Cameron, thank you so much for writing in. I do have uh, another viewer mail here from a guy named TJ. TJ writes in and says, permission to use this you have. What up, Nick? Just chilling, watching the vlog for chits and giggles. I thought... I thought I'd see if anything worthwhile showed up on Amazon when you search for squonker. Shocker, nothing really, but this wacky thing. Yeah, and he sent that, uh, pardon me, <laughs> burp right in the middle of it. Yeah, he sent me that picture of the, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the sidecar thing. It's China is officially out of ideas because this is the most hideous thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like they said, let's take everything that's cool about a mech mod and fucking ruin it. And what it is, is this little attachment that you attach onto your mech mod and it's a little sidecar for a little silicone squonk bottle so you can attach your atomizer, your squonk atomizer onto a mech and still be able to squonk it and that is dumb. And it's dumb for a lot of reasons other than it looks looks dumb, it ruins what's cool about mech mods, and it's been done before. Good lord, it's been done before. Maybe it's just a lot of new people that don't remember the history of vaping, but if you go back to around 2012, 2012, maybe late 2012, I want to say, uh, Super T Manufacturing created this same exact thing. Thing. It wasn't a squonker though, it was for dripping. It was, it was, instead of the juice coming up through the bottom, the juice went in through the top. And basically what you would do is you had a mod like this and you would attach an atomizer to it. And then you would attach this thing on top of your atomizer. And then that went out to a little sidecar squonky guy, right? And the idea was you could vape, 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 squeeze the bottle and it would not squonk juice up, but actually drip juice down onto your coils. And when I say atomizer, I'm not talking about an RDA like this. I'm talking about those little tiny cheap uh, Chinese, you know, uh, disposable, Joytech disposable atomizers. I, I hated it then. I thought it looked so dumb. And when those went away, I breathed a sigh of relief and I said, thank God that those are gone. And sure enough, just leave it up to China to re-release it. And I don't know. I don't know. Listen to this. I want your thoughts. Please put your thoughts in the comments below this video of what you think of these squonker sidecar guys. Do they bother you? Do you think they ruin the aesthetic of a mech mod like I think they ruin the aesthetic of a mech mod? Additionally, I don't have one, but I've got to imagine it adds an insane voltage drop. You gotta remember, mech mods are unregulated. So after the first like hour of using your batteries, it's gonna start hitting substantially less hard and less hard and less hard until your battery battery has been depleted. And adding that huge sidecar thing on there is just going to instantly give you a really wicked voltage drop. I, don't, I can't say that for sure, okay? I don't have one. I don't know how much voltage drop it adds, but I have to assume logic dictates that it's going to add a big voltage drop. And by big, I mean, you know, into the point decimals. It's not going to be like, well, your, your mod was firing at 3.8 volts and now it's firing at 2.8 volts. I doubt it's going to be that big of a voltage drop, but I would honestly not be surprised if it was that much of a voltage drop. I won't know until I get one. I don't know if I'm ever going to get one. So let's speculate. Let me know down in the comments below. This is one thing in particular I would love to get your feedback on and I would love to share it in next week's vlog because I want to come back to this sidecar because I got another product earlier this week that is similar-ish but done much better. Sorry, sometimes I just have to pause and vape.
and I usually try to hide it. Like I'll edit it out and then I'll wait till like the vapor is cleared and then I'll start talking again. But this time, nope, it's just, I, well, I just want to vape. Anyway, the last viewer mail this week comes from a fella named Jason. So Jason writes in and says, hey Nick, my name is Jason. Feel free to use any and all parts of this email in your video or any other outlets. Well, that's, that is that is also a very thorough, you know, uh, disclaimer, like feel free to use this on all your news media outlets. So my question to you is, I've been mainly using 24 millimeter RDAs, but I'm going to be getting a 25 millimeter mechanical mod from a vendor or from a friend for Christmas. And I was wondering what 25 millimeter atomizers you would recommend. I'm currently trying to decide if I want to purchase either the Sumo RDA or the Rebel. I'm swinging more towards the Rebel because I've heard so many good things about your RDA, but there are any, but are but if there are any others that I could take a look at, I would appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Keep up the good work. Also love the videos. Planning on becoming a Patreon member. Just so, so just a heads up. <laughs> Stay cloudy. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. I don't know if that heads up was like a warning, like, watch out, bro. When Jason becomes a Patreon, it's just, it's time to wreck shop. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm biased. Uh, I am biased in this. I, I love the Recoil Rebel. I think it's a great RDA. It's a nice 25 millimeter banger RDA, but there are a lot of good 25 millimeter RDAs out there. The problem is I literally cannot think of any right now. I'm very sure Kennedy Vapor does a 25 millimeter Kennedy RDA. Good Lord, what other 25 millimeter RDAs are out there? I, I truly and honestly, this is I, I, this is something that I am going to need to get feedback on. So attention. Twitter. We need to help out Jason. If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me at Grim Green and tweet at me. Good. What are yours? What are some of your guys' favorite 25 millimeter atomizers? I really want to help Jason out here, but I alone do not possess the knowledge of what, how, first of all, how many 25 millimeter RDAs are out there because I, other than the Kennedy, other than the Recoil, and other than the Sumo, I honestly cannot think of another one off the top of my head. And, and that's just crazy. So get on Twitter and tweet at me, at Grim Green, your favorite 25 millimeter atomizer that you have used. Use the hashtag 25mm for Jason so I can find it 25 mm for Jason. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post a tweet. I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to use your Twitter replies next week. And hopefully next week we can get Jason an answer about the 25 millimeter atomizers. I apologize, Jason. I don't have that type of knowledge just off the top of my head. My brain is full of Star Wars theories right now. So anyway, that's going to wrap up our viewer mails. And once again, like I said earlier, if anybody has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here vlog program, go ahead and send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. They do sometimes get replied to. In fact, a lot of the times they get replied to via email, but a lot of them I do save and I do insert here into the vlog video in the viewer mail section. So yeah, that's what I got for that segment. What's left? What's left in the vlog? We're getting down, we're winding down to the end. I'm gonna make a few adjustments on my camera, but we're gonna taste a, uh, we're gonna taste a very random juice right now. And then apparently at some point during the viewer mail, my, my rear lighting, my back lighting just died, just turned off. I turned around to adjust it and it was just, nope, off. So cool. Interested to see how that looks on video. All right. So what we are going to do right now is taste a very random juice. This comes from Kendo. Kendo sent me some cotton and I had talked about, eh, not a huge fan of the Kendo cotton. I'm going to, I'm going to use it a couple more times. I would really like to get that cotton working a little bit better, but they also sent some of their juice, which I have never had ever in my life. Kendo juice. I randomly grabbed this bottle because it said coconut ice cream and holy crap, that sounds amazing to me right now. Yeah, I mean, it smells like coconut. What I'm worried about, what I get really worried about with coconut flavors, let me knuckle test this real fast. Okay, okay. 
What I get really worried about with coconut flavors is that I'm constantly terrified that it's going to taste like suntan lotion because there's so many fucking suntan lotions, sunscreen, I should say, not suntan lotion. Who says suntan lotion anymore? Sunscreen. There's so many sunscreens out there that smell like coconut. They're like coconut flavored sunscreen. And now whenever I taste coconut, it just reminds me of sunscreen. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that that doesn't happen. But what we're going to be tasting it out of today is the dead rabbit freshly re-wicked and I am going to be using the priest cap on it. In fact, I got out the priest cap and I realized that there is also a butcher cap. Of course, Gangs of New York. I know Heathen is a huge Gangs of New York fan. So the priest cap and the butcher cap. Out of these two, I would actually really be interested to see which one is vaping Heathen's favorite. I, before I rebuilt this, I put the cap on and I tooted on it, you know, with no coils or juice or anything, just to test the airflow. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. And then I put the butcher cap on there, which is different. The butcher cap is slots and the priest cap is all the dots, all the holes like this, all the holes. So I put the priest cap on there and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, that's actually pretty smooth. And then I put this on there and I went, oh, okay. That kind of feels exactly the same. I did not notice really any difference between the priest cap and the butcher cap. Other than the priest cap is this like coppery rose gold color and the butcher cap is like a brass color. So we're gonna use the priest cap. Let me juice this up. Let me actually wick, let me juice this up real fast. Juicing, 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 juicing. And that is uh, a very, very non, non matchy matchy setup. I put the priest cap with the dead rabbit on top of that RevTech GT and it just it just really looks awkward up there, doesn't it? I don't have anything in eyesight that I could throw this on that would make it look any cooler. I could throw it on the and this Asmodus. I could throw it on the Asmodus Kodama that I love so much, but I don't want to fuck up the whole like battery life mouth to lung thing. So that's gonna have to wait. When that battery life test is over, I'm gonna be using that Kodama for a lot more stuff because I love that mod. But anyway, what do we got here? Uh, 0.13 at 50 watts. Let's turn that up. Let's try a 0.13 at 73 watts. This is Kendo Juice Coconut Ice Cream. Uh, weird. Okay, well, as per usual, I'm just gonna sit here just for a hot minute. I'm gonna vape some of this and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. Okay, so now that there's fucking vapor everywhere in the house. Okay, so the good news is this does not taste like sunscreen at all, but it also isn't great. Here's the thing. Remember last week in Arcadia when we were talking about like the lemonberry gobstopper, how it tasted like one cohesive flavor? This is a coconut ice cream, and when I inhale it, it tastes like coconut, just like Coconut and culotta. For some reason, they added culotta to this to give it like a cooling effect, which I really very much dislike. And then on the exhale, it tastes like a strong like vanilla ice cream. I get coconut, vanilla, and culotta. All of those together, they don't really form that like one cohesive flavor that I'm after. I kind of taste all of these components separately. The coconut is good. It tastes like a legit, like not, not, terribly candied coconut, more like the, the coconut flakes or something, maybe sweetened coconut flakes like you buy from Trader Joe's. And then it does taste like a pretty rich, like creamy vanilla ice cream as well. And then for some reason in the middle of that, they added culotta to make it feel cool when you're vaping it, which was bad, dumb. I don't like that. I don't like culotta in juices just especially in bakery flavored juices. Culotta really only works in fruity flavored juices. At least in my opinion, to my palate, this is all just my opinion, okay? It's enjoyable, it's not too sweet, which is great. That's my constant fear of basically every new juice that I try is gonna, it's gonna be way too sweet. I think, wow, fuck, they just put, probably put a bunch of fucking sweetener in here. But I like the trend that more and more liquid vendors are using less and less sweetener in their juice. 
juices so we don't get like those gaggy sweet juices as much anymore. But it's fine. It's nice and sweet. It tastes like coconut. It tastes like vanilla ice cream and it does taste like culotta. There is a culotta cooling component in this and that mixed with the vanilla mixed with the ice cream just makes for a real weird vape. I would truly and honestly love like absolutely love to try this juice without the culotta in it. If they just did a coconut ice cream without the culotta, I, I think I would be much more into that. It's just weird. The culotta makes the French vanilla ice cream component of this taste wrong. It makes it almost taste a little bit sour, like a little bit like sour milk. The coconut though is nice. It's a nice sweet coconut. God, I just keep repeating myself. I just want to try this juice without the culotta. I like this juice otherwise. I wish they hadn't included the culotta in this. And to me, that cooling sensation kind of really ruins this juice. It just needs to taste like coconut ice cream. It doesn't need to feel like coconut ice cream when you're vaping it. Save the, the cooling for when you're actually eating cold ice cream and not vaping it. So yeah, there you go. That's Kendo Juice Coconut Ice Cream. I will throw links to basically everything I talk about in this vlog down in the description below. And I will put down I will put a link. I'll try to track down a link for Kendo Juice Coconut Ice Cream. Shouldn't be that difficult. If this is something that you're interested in, if you go, yeah, I want coconut ice cream with vanilla and a little bit, uh, pardon me, of cooling sensation. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to burp right there, and I, but I'm not editing it out. What you see is what you get over here on the Grim Green YouTube, burps included. But I will throw a link down in the description to this Kendo Juice Coconut Ice Cream if this is something you're after. It's, it's good. It's just, I wish it didn't have culotta in it. Anyway, we're going to wrap that up. We're going to wrap up this whole vlog man it is time it's time to get down to the end of the vlog what we're gonna do right now my favorite segment your favorite segment everybody's favorite segment favorite comments of the week All right, let's do this. Favorite comments of the week. This is a week where uh, I don't think I asked for any feedback in the comments of the video. I don't think I asked for any feedback on Twitter. So right now, this is just going to be favorites of the com favorite comments of the week that got screen captured either by myself or by Nico, Mr. Nico in Finland. Nico, if you're watching this, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful New Year. Thank you for always going through and screen capturing some favorite comments of the week that I might have missed or uh, you know that are funny or entertaining that I otherwise might have missed, but I got one here from Matthew. Matthew's uh, Matthew's comment of the week actually ties into uh, a viewer mail that had been uh, from a few weeks ago, and it also actually ties into a viewer mail I just read about uh, Cameron's mom not wanting to stop smoking and not wanting to try vaping, but Matthew left a comment and said, when it came to me having a discussion with my family about someone they didn't approve of, my fiance, I simply told them that if they love and care about me and my happiness, then they should just let me be happy, and if they can't do that, then they can leave my life at their will. Life is too short to be worried about other people's thoughts and opinions, so for that guy that has the aunt that is six months smoke-free, simply tell the family members that she is happier and healthier healthier now and that is all that matters. Yes, absolutely. I remember the email he was talking about. His aunt had started vaping and the rest of his family was giving her nothing but a hard time about vaping. That is, uh, that's a great solution. Just, just let people be happy. <laughs> Got another comment of the week here from Daniel. Daniel left a comment and said, you need to name a juice that thing that I like to do as well as bleh, lol, Make those names to join vlog day, bro trip, etc. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, Daniel. Um, probably not. I, pro I probably am not gonna do that just because that thing I like to do. I'm sorry. I have a little piece of lettuce still left over from lunch. It just appeared in my mouth somewhere. Just some fucking magic. And, and you know, it's nothing uh, personal. The only reason that I wouldn't name a juice that thing I like to do is because. I don't know. I feel like that's. I feel like that's a lot to say, and not everybody's gonna get the connection. Like vlog day is something that's from the Grim Green videos. Normal view is something that's from Grim Green videos. Bro trip is something that's from Grim Green videos. That thing I like to do. That could. That could be anybody. It, that's. That's an anybody saying. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not something that's exclusive to a grim green video. Although bleh, that that is pretty good. I do say bleh. I do like to bleh my juice. I bleh like my juice like crazy all over the place. I feel like bleh would maybe be better suited for a t-shirt than like a juice. Like I'll make a grim green shirt on the back. I'll just put bleh life. <laughs> Always love getting that constructive criticism on my YouTube. Uh, Pero Vapor left a comment that said, One of your shittiest reviews, IMO. Too much blah, blah, blah for nothing. And instead of talking about how you coiled the RDA, it would be less boring showing it. Well... There you go. Sorry, my videos are my videos, and, and I like to do them the way that I like to do them. <laughs> and then uh, my last favorite comment of the week is a comment that I think sums up the last of 2017 almost perfectly. Uh, Bizzle Basil left a comment and said, Bonza, number one RDA all time, you annoying fuck. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah, the Bonza. I, di I didn't include the Bonza in my favorites of 2017 because my favorites of 2017 was my favorites, and the Bonza's great. It's just not my favorite. But apparently, according to this gentleman, uh, because I didn't include it, uh, I am also an annoying fuck. So cool. Either way, I don't care. It's whatever. Bizzle Bazzle, your opinion means very little to me. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's what I got for favorite comments of the week. That's what I got for a vlog, everybody. How was that for a vlog? I feel like that was pretty bitchin'. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up. Things should be fairly normal until we go out to the sand dunes. So just like it's been, reviews Monday, Tuesday, vlog on Thursday, podcast Sunday. I hope you can join me for all of those. If not, then I'll see you back here next week for another vlog. And I don't know what I'm going to grab right now. Ah, how about this? How about this weird guy? How about the war wolf with the Eris tank? Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always... Oh, it turns itself off? Wow. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and onward we go into 2018. As always, let's keep on vaping.